Welcome to Entertaining Insights, the podcast that highlights life lessons, laughs, and entertainment. I'm Dr. Nancy Burke, a clinical psychologist who, after a rather long and traditional career, landed in the world of entertainment, humor, and self-help. These days, I talk to cool people we can all learn from. Published playwright and Broadway insider Robin Rothstein and I will be talking about writing for the stage, the popularity of playwriting and short plays, and why you might want to give it a try. Let's get started. Well, in keeping with this uh, rather Broadway focused episode, I decided that our second segment was time to call in someone that I've wanted to have on the show for quite some time. Robin Rothstein has been associated with Broadway for years. For over a decade, she served as director of operations at Broadway Across America. She is a content creator specializing in arts and culture and business and community development. And she's also an arts journalist, but she is also a nationally and internationally produced and published playwright, which is the reason I wanted to talk with her on this episode. Have a listen. Hi, Robin. Thank you for letting me corner you today. Hey, Nancy. Great to hear from you. I'm happy to to be cornered. Well, I knew I was going to have you on the show at some point because our paths seem to cross so much, especially when we're talking about Broadway. And so this was a perfect episode. But I feel like you are just such an expert on all the ins and outs and angles of theater. And then I saw that your play landed in the upcoming book, The Best 10 Minute Plays 2021. I thought I've got to talk to Robin about playwriting because it seems like everyone is playwriting these days. Yeah, well, if it seems that way, it's probably because everybody's <laughs> stuck home and has the time, I guess, right? Um, but I feel like the short form has been around, well, I've been doing it a long time and it's been popular for a long time, but I bet it is more popular now because uh, there are a lot of uh, benefits to it um, for the people writing and for the producers, I'd say. Well, and I had never heard about short form playwriting and, um, or at least like, a few years ago. And then all of a sudden, I start seeing friends on Facebook posting about their short form playwriting and awards they've gotten and things like that. And so I just wondered if, you know, is it something that has been surging over the last few years or is it just something that I'm suddenly noticing more for whatever reason? Uh, it might be that, that you're noticing it more. I feel like it's been around, but then there are always companies evolving. And also now that we're online as well, that there might be more companies looking to the short form as a way to get more content out. So it, it could very well be from an anecdotal standpoint uh, that it is surging and it might surge even more. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. So how did you land into the world of theater and then you know, move into playwriting. Ooh, that's loaded. I mean, I've I had know. a long, <laughs> a long meandering career. So anybody who's uh, on the young side, uh, you know, wondering about how their career path will go, you know, they should be open to the fact that it could take many turns. So, I mean, I started out as a performer, as I think many people who go into theater uh, start off with, um, and then I became interested in writing more in college. I was really lucky. I got into a class that was taught by the highly acclaimed playwright Romulus Linney, who at the time I wasn't aware what a big deal he was, which was probably good. Don't you love that? <laughs> yeah. When you later go, oh, that was, you know, yeah. that person was pretty significant. Yeah. Cause I think I would have been, I would have freaked out in right. the class if I knew how important he was. Um, and he was, he was a great, great teacher. Um, and then, uh, and, and so I became a hybrid sort of performer playwright type. I uh, ended up getting my actor's equity card. I did sketch comedy. And the sketch comedy made me, I think, veer more towards the playwriting. And I was getting my work done. Interesting. Uh, well, as a playwright, and you're a writer, I mean, you know that there's a, you have a little more uh, authority over, you know, your, over your work. You, you don't necessarily need somebody immediately to write. You can write and execute. You know, with, with acting, you kind of need other people. You need a producer for sure. Um, so I like <clears throat> I liked the inherent um, ability to be able to have a little more control over my art. 
Wow. That's, you know, it is the perfect example of why I have told my kids and then anyone else who will listen uh, that writing is never wasted. And, you know, you you use it in every area that you tiptoe into. So I, I love that piece of it. Well, in doing playwriting, have you learned more about yourself as well? Not just to having a vehicle perhaps to perform or, you know, a vehicle to express yourself in, but uh, have you learned more about yourself or did it help you become a better actress? All of those things, actually. Um, the Well, I learned, I learned more about myself because I think inherently we put some of ourselves into our work. Of course. So, yeah, so that there was that. And then I think from a, just a writing skill set, and, and coming to a blank page, you know, you probably experienced that too as a writer and you have to sit down and do the work and, and all the, the things that come up with that, right. how you, how you manage that. And then certainly as an actor, I, I have done readings over the years, even since I've kind of put my acting on hold and I can tell simply from doing the writing and just gain, gaining some wisdom from life that it, I felt that my acting improved uh, based on the writing. So all three of those things, there's, it's all positive. Right. Well, how did you first decide to take a chance and write a play or, you know, or was it in that class actually? And then it came naturally to, you know, begin to work in that arena. Yeah. Well, so I, I got, I got some confidence in that class. And then, uh, after, after college, I went to a program at the National Theater Institute. Well, the program is the National Theater Institute at the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center. And that's really where I got the, the aha moment. I, I wrote wow. a, a play there and the, all the students performed it. And the, the, the rush of watching people react was, was intoxicating. So I was like, wow. I mean, there's that. But also, just, I, just, I felt a connection with everybody who was watching it. I felt like I was touching people in a way I'd never touched people before as far as, you know, wow. talking and, and writing, just, um, it just, it felt very, uh, exhilarating. So I just, it just kept me on that path. Well, you know, that to me is wild because I never thought about it, but, you know, you think about writing a novel and people reading your work. I never really thought about the rush that it would be as a writer to see your words, executed like you kind of think once you write it and people read it it's over mm-hmm. and so it lives in a totally different way in a totally different space and i know it's sort of like uh yeah but but i never really thought about it like that as a writer i mean it really is an interesting thing to experience i'm sure now i really want to do a, i really want to write a play <laughs> Just, oh you should you know, well, one more thing really- the um, the journey is interesting too because you know you're going to be alone in your house writing the play and then at some point it's done or done ish and you pass it along to you have to start to trust other collaborators and you know a director presumably first and then the actors start to read it and then it starts to take on a, you know you're still there and you're still a part of it but now it's a sort of a group thing because the actors and director if if they're good and in tune really add some great stuff it's objective they're coming at it from a different perspective. And it, that becomes even more exhilarating. And then you put it in front of an audience and it's even more exhilarating because they're adding their you know, perspective to right. it. So it's, it's just ongoing. And then, and then you have an immediate audience reaction, which you don't mm-hmm. get even if you've written a screenplay in the same kind of way. And, you know, when you talk to people who are uh, Broadway actors, they'll often say that it's the live theater that gives them the biggest rush. And so I'm wondering too, there's, there's a subset of writers who would probably say the same exact thing. It's very interesting. I I think so also, because, you know, you you write something for the stage and you expect, you know, you kind of expect, Oh, they're going to probably react this way here. And they're going to react this other way here. And then sometimes they don't react at all as you expect. And then the next day, a different audience comes in and reacts as you do expect. And it's just, it's this, really interesting um way of just you know looking at the public and figuring out like trying to figure out why you know why is this group reacting this way and why is this other group reacting this way so there's there's this constant uh you know uh, mysteries being uh added into the mix so it's very it's like constantly keeping me on my toes wow well you 
are the woman behind or one of the people behind Mad Libs Live. And I was wondering if you could give us the very short lowdown on how that happened, what you did, and what it was like bringing Mad Libs, which I'm sure people uh, know about. I grew up with Mad Libs, or I didn't grow up with Mad Libs. Uh, My kids grew up with Mad Libs, so I kind of grew up a second time (laughs) with them. But can you give us a scoop? Yeah, the scoop is um, my brother-in-law, who was not yet my brother-in-law, was uh, very close with Leonard Stern, who uh, was the creator or co-creator of Mad Libs. Oh, that's cool. I was always a, yeah, I was always a fan. And I'd just come off of writing a, an original children's musical. I was looking for something else to write. I was chomping at the bit. And I was like, oh my God. And I, I get to meet Leonard Stern at my sister's wedding. And we got to talking and it, and the gears started turning. I'm like, wow, I think, I, I bet this would be a great kids musical. And so I stayed in touch with Leonard and I asked for his blessing and he said, yes. And uh, I had to get in touch with the publisher, which was Penguin at the time. It became Penguin Random House. And for several years, I chased after them with this idea. And eventually, a few years later, after a lot of persistence, they said, OK, uh, I got, so, you know, I was doing, I, I met my legal limit at that point. So I had to bring an attorney on to help me sort of, you know, seal the deal. Uh, and then I uh, was lucky to get a commission to develop it. And I worked with a, a lovely composer, a very talented guy named Jeff Thompson. And uh, we worked for it worked on it for a year. And then we uh, explored our options and uh, we got a producer who was interested in bringing it off Broadway, did a few readings in 2015. Uh, Yeah. So the timeline was I got the idea in around 27, 2007, 2008. I got the initial green light from Penguin in 2012, the rights uh, around then or a year later. Uh, 2013 was when I worked on the commission. 2015, was a year of readings and then the production. So it's a good seven or eight years of dedication yeah. to that. A uh, lot of work. It's a business that is uh, not well suited for those who cannot delay gratification or lack patience. <laughs> right. Well, that's why I like the short form. There's a lot of immediate gratification with that. So I like to bounce back and forth because I feel a little bit more like the, the 10 minute or 15 minute play has a chance of having you know a life outside of my apartment uh, more wow. likely than like a, a Mad Libs Live or a full length play, which can take years to, to develop and may not see the light of day. So, wow. um, yeah. How many short form plays have you written? Oh, you know, there's a bunch in my file that will never see the light of day. As far as published ones, there's three or four that I've had published. Um, actually, one got translated into Chinese, which was really, cool. pretty exciting. Um, yeah, four or five um, are published. That I, you know, this one's going to now be like the fifth one, I guess. Um, yeah, and a few monologues are out there and some anthologies. It's great. It's they every once in a while a student will email me to ask permission to do it, and that reminds me. Oh yeah, there are people around the world that actually, you know, know about my work. It's pretty exciting. That's amazing. Well, you have such a background in theater. I'm wondering if someone like me or someone who doesn't have writing experience. Is this something that people can almost self-educate on? Is it is it worth trying to tiptoe in if they're somewhat interested or fascinated by the whole concept? Um, I would say that, you know, working in a vacuum is probably not ideal. And there's so many ways that you can have be exposed. You know, you, you can probably attend uh, uh, online readings now and observe, you know, what plays seem to be working, what are not working. Right. There are online classes by different theater companies. I'm thinking off the top of my head, the Playwright Center out of Minneapolis. If you become a member there um, for, I think it's only 75 bucks a year, you can have access to all kinds of things. They have a list of contests and festivals and they have classes. Wow. Um, and I think just bit by bit, um, and I think, and then you just start, you know, approaching the page and then you Gather some friends, either online or in your apartment, <laughs> and and hear it out loud. Because on the page feels one way, and then you hear people say stuff out loud, and the cadence and the tempo may not be what you expected. And so you go back to the drawing board. It's constant, you know, trial and error uh, between page to, you know, human being reading it out loud. So it's it's a process. I would I would say look to what, like I said, if you can find readings and see what what works, find a, a, a low maintenance kind of class. 
Um, but I think it's something people can pick up. And I think it's it's a very rewarding, even if you finish it, it's just a rewarding experience. Wow. Well, you're such an advocate for the theater, and I'm just so grateful that you joined us today. What's the best way for people to find out more about you? Yeah, they can just go to my website, robinrothstein.com. Um, and I'm also on LinkedIn, so they can say hello to me over there. Oh, that's great. Robin, will you come back? Because I have so many more questions and I I just, I really feel like this is such a great opportunity for people to find out more about the theater in so many interesting ways. You have so many different angles and hats um, in the field. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to come back. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Nancy. So now, thanks to the fabulous Robin Rothstein, I want to write a short play. Um, And uh, as you might have guessed, I know nothing about that. So my work will be cut out for me. But I'm so glad she joined us today to walk us through a bit of her process and share her experiences with us and also just give us some insight into how to approach that. I also love the whole Mad Libs story. It's proof that great creative ideas are sometimes right in front of us if we pay attention. Um, Of course, Robin's background made her the perfect person to be able to bring that to life, but it really is a great story. We will have links to Robin and her work in the show notes, but make sure you go to robinrothstein.com for more on Robin. Well, that's a wrap for today. Thank you again to Brian Stokes Mitchell for joining us and sharing his wisdom and his talent. And thank you to Brian for all of his advocacy work. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, share it with a friend. Better yet, share it on Facebook with all of your friends and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Head to entertaininginsights.com for more of my interviews with other Broadway actors, including Sutton Foster and Kelly O'Hara. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss an episode. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts. This is Dr. Nancy Burke. Thanks so much for listening. Have a positively entertaining day. The views and opinions expressed by guests of Entertaining Insights are those of the guests. They do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of Nancy Burke Media, LLC, or Dr. Nancy Burke.